Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here today, and I'm looking forward to sharing with you some insights from my experience. My name is Olga Kuritsina. I'm a lead pro uh, product manager at Farfetch. And before my current role, I spent considerable time on launching and developing machine learning and data products in various roles. For example, I worked on personalized communication and optimizations in MarTech products. Before this, I was a product leader in different roles in uh, Mail.ru. For today's theme, I will use my experience that I was involved in creating data products for advertisers uh, that, uh, for a platform. Um, and this experience allowed me to intersect with machine learning and advertisement. Finally, I had an opportunity to delve into search and recommendations in e-commerce, uh, also in mail.ru. And in our conversation today, I'll draw from these experiences uh, to share some practical knowledge and tips what I hope could be applied to other products and uh, organizations. Um, yeah, so first, I'd love to start with uh, presenting the key takeaways uh, from this session. So each of these steps represents crucial aspect of the process and learnings which I got from my experience in building um, machine learning based products. So the first one is about crafting the product story to guide product development and to help the team to understand the angle better. Next point is critical task of aligning the team on core, this is the team on core and related metrics. Uh, this alignment ensures that the team is focusing on what truly matters for the product success, and also it helps to define how success looks like and how we're going to measure that. Also, very connected topic, the next one is um, kind of stakeholder, managing stakeholder expectations. And obviously, it's a crucial skill or a crucial aspect of product management. But here, I want to focus on some um, distinction or some maybe highlights of what could be considered for machine learning based products. Um, the, um, the next one, number four, is about data. So, the value of the outcomes is directly linked to the quality and representativeness of data. And so what I want to highlight is some uh, thoughts or potential tips on uh, how to consider like, how to consider data when you build product, um, this type of product. Uh, and finally, I will cover testing hypothesis in a cost-efficient way. So it's important for any type of product. And here I want to highlight some ideas which I think is the most interesting for machine learning based products. Obviously, it's not the full guide into the theme, but some highlights which on how to make product development more efficient. So let's deep dive into the first milestone, crafting the product story. Then we think about traditional products. We usually describe them by the user interaction with the interface. Product manager could detail what the user can, can do with this interface, what will happen when they click a button, and so on. So, in other words, interface serves as a map which uh, helps us to explain the team what is expected from the product and align the team on that. Um, however, however, these machine learning products this changes. Machine learning products often don't have an interface, or at least don't have it in the same way traditional products do. So a product manager could face the challenge to describe the feature in a different way. To close the gap, we need to craft a story, a story where it explains how users will interact with the product, what are their expectations, uh, and what results um, they should anticipate in different scenarios. So the story helps synchronize understanding of the product across teams, and also support product managers in thinking over the solution in a comprehensive way. Let's consider, I think, familiar example, product recommendations in e-commerce. So usually product recommendations, we could see on product detail page, um, somewhere under the main information on the product. So on the surface, the interface for these features quite simple. Usually it's a preview of products, but what 
the interface doesn't reveal is what uh, happens behind the scenes. And I think that's the most interesting part. So how could we navigate this um, list? Um, I think that what, what could work is to delve into specific use cases and to answer some questions or key questions on the um, uh, on the user interaction as a product. Some examples. Um, what uh, kind of customers what will see? Uh, I mean, would be there di any difference for like new customer or existing customer? Should result be the same or like different? Or what criteria we think are the most important, or, like product criteria are the most important for customers? For example, are there any like product parameters which we think are necessary to keep the same? Or are there any parameters which are more important for a customer based on customer resources, let's say? Um, and which uh, criteria are not that important and could be, um, yeah, well, could be more flexible. So we could think about this type of questions and about customer expectations and describe them through these different kind of stories, how and what customer will see in different situations. And by addressing such type of questions, we essentially will craft a story which help us to define and to build the product at the end, and also to align uh, this in the team. Um, the next point is about key metrics. It goes without saying that we need to define key metrics for a product, right? Um, we also, like these metrics should be high level, they should be directly associated with company objectives. The caveat is that there could be an expectation that many metrics, different metrics, could be improved simultaneously. Pretty often it's not the case. So there could be even conflict between different metrics. For example, let's take e-commerce as an example. We might be focusing on increasing customer engagement, but uh, it, without considering other metrics, it could lead to decline in profitability if um, like we don't take into account uh, like product margins. So understanding the trade-offs between different key metrics for the company, different metrics for a company, will help to prioritize the efforts and to define the product strategy and define these key metrics. So because the metrics could be in the conflict and because it's pretty challenging to improve all of them simultaneously, this is why we need to align a key metrics and also counter metrics, metrics which we are not going to improve, but we are aiming to maintain them at a certain level while continue focusing on the key metrics. So challenge here could be to define the trade-offs and to align the key metric, uh, align on that it's something like what we need to choose one and we need to choose several of them, but not all at the same time. Uh, what I think worth mentioning here is that sometimes the key metric can be directly measured or it takes a long time to evaluate the impact on this key metric. For example, lifetime value in some products could be um, just metric which is, uh, which is moving really slowly. So in this case, this proxy metrics could be especially helpful as they offer more immediate feedback loop and allow quick interaction quick iterations, plus they allow to learn uh, from this feedback. For example, in one of the products where I was working, we wanted to increase number of closed deals on the platform. So we want to uh, measure like closed deals between buyer and seller, but the deal was happening offline and we not always knew that it really happened. And in 100% of cases, we have delays in data. So like uh, um, that uh, it was just really challenging to learn from this because it takes weeks before we get really access to, to this data in our platform. So what we decided to do, we decided to use the number of contacts between buyer and seller as a proxy metric. And in our particular case, it helps us to learn faster and to use this metric as a key metric for our algorithms. So that helped our team to move quicker with this experiment. Um, 
while key metrics and proxy metrics give us insight into um, to use uh, direct impact, uh, our product's direct impact, we should not neglect the metrics which uh, assessing how data is represented to users. So these related metrics are essential as they provide a comprehensive picture of the user experience and help us to prevent potential missteps. So some examples, not the full list of these metrics that is on the slide. In essence, these related metrics help to understand how to improve the performance of our products. They provide a more holistic view of the product performance, so they're helping us to understand its like impact and give us guidance on where to invest in their like areas of improvement. So by focusing on these related metrics, we could ensure that our users are presented as accurate, there was no data, or at least we know where the area of improvements are. So as a logical next step, uh, I want to um, highlight uh, managing stakeholder expectations. So previously we touched on the fact that improving all metrics simultaneously isn't always feasible. Different stakeholders across the organization could be concerned about different metrics. For example, profitability, overall sales volume, customer engagement, etc. And I guess that because of buzz around machine learning, there could be sometimes an expectation that we could create miracle and improve everything at the same time. And um, I, I think this is why this is essential here to manage stakeholder expectations and explain on a high level how the product works. So taking this time to explain how our solution works on a high level can significantly enhance understanding among all stakeholders. And this shared understanding can aid in improving solutions, ideating new features, and even producing just better bug reports. Then given this side of view, I think we should consider discussing again, key metrics and related metrics we're using to measure success, type of uh, types of data we use, and also high level of your overview of underlying algorithms and principles behind them. Um, machine learning solutions can sometimes be perceived as a black box by those who are outside of the team. And this lack of uh, visibility can lead to two issues. One, that it could lead to a lack of belief in the efficiency of solution, simply because it's not fully understand or just there is no, again, visibility given to other teams. Or, on the other hand, there could be an overly optimistic expectations, again, such as expecting uh, moving all the metrics at the same time without, let's say, any effort uh, from the teams. So by breaking down the six complexities and providing insight on how product works, we could build trust and align expectations, ensuring that everyone is on the same page about product capabilities and limitations. The next point is about data. Embracing real data is a crucial step in developing machine learning products. By using real world data, uh, something really close to what will happen in production, we can significantly enhance the performance and accuracy especially in the contrast with using uh, some data sets downloaded from the internet. Real data is rich, it's messy, it's often missing parts, but this is something that truly really reflects the environment where our products needs to function in. For example, in a project, uh, in one of my projects, we were developing a solution to recognize objects on images for use or uploaded content on a platform. Our initial test on high quality images, which we made by ourselves, like an office on a white wall behind, um, shows uh, like really performed well. But we wanted to prove that it's a little different in real life. Our users were uploading pictures with multiple potential main objects. The quality was quite different from what we tested. Um, from this kind of test photos. So our initial solution had a hard time identifying what is the main object and what is happening on this image, which led us to realize how crucial it was to base our solution on real data and how 
uh, time efficient it is to start working on their real data from the beginning. Another point why it's also helpful that using of real data also gives an idea of the cost of productions uh, of the solution. So we could anticipate by doing that challenges related to us accessing and processing data. And in short, using real data from start allows us to create more robust, realistic, cost-effective machine learning solution, um, which kind of ready to be operated in a real life, a real environment. And finally, when we are working on machine learning products, it's crucial to remember that building model, building infrastructure to test ideas could be really expensive. And instead of going all in, I think we should aim to test ideas through kind of lean approach. And three thoughts on this. So the first one, I think sometimes it might be efficient even to postpone implementing machine learning and start with simple rules and guidelines. And I guess sometimes this approach could give us 80% of result with 20% um, of the effort. So additionally, it would help us to gather more data on the impact of investment in a particular area. One example to illustrate this idea. Um, imagine that a team have, has a hypothesis that in e-commerce, cross-category recommendations could be um, enhanced, could enhance uh, customer experience, right? So as, as an example, we could suggest then customers looking for phone, we could suggest cases for this type of form. Sounds pretty logical, right? So there are two approaches here. One is to invest a lot of time and resources um, to build infrastructure and to uh, algorithms to, to define this complement, to predict this complementary categories. Or we could handpick several category pairs like forms and cases for form and test, implement them pretty quickly and test this um, to validate the hypothesis. The second approach will be much quicker. And yes, it will have, uh, it will have much lower coverage, but it will give us an idea on the potential impact, solution cost, and also if we have data needed to build the uh, full-scale solution. Another approach is to start from MVP uh, for the product. And this approach brings two advantages. First of all, MVP helps to understand again what data, data is needed for the final product, even if it means doing some part of the job manually at first time. It also, second point, confirms that it's technically feasible and um, um, yeah, and kind of what and try and helps to define what infrastructure support is needed for the solution, what's the cost, what is quality. And the last one, the third one, it also helps us to measure the impact. So to understand if we want and we need to con continue investment in this area. The last point regarding cost um, effect and cost efficient uh, hypothesis testing is more about tech. So there is an idea floating around that once you have developed technology, it could be applied, applied to pretty much everything, right? Um, but in practice, it doesn't work that way. And um, let's use one example. Let's use image recognition as an example. Let's imagine that we have a team who is working on the content moderation. If they want to use image recognition, their focus would be on identifying specific object on an image, maybe some appropriate content or something. But if we uh, take the same technology and apply it to a different problem, let's say auto-filling um, for the product listings, the example I mentioned before, suddenly it would be a full new challenge and the solution would be completely different from the first one, even if some words in the technology are the same. So while it might be tempting to develop a technology and then search for problems it can solve, it seems to be far more efficient first to identify the problem and then tell the technology to solve it. Um, and yeah, so I guess it would be just way more efficient and 
applied to any technology we use. So aligning tech development with specific product ideas can save us time from spinning um, around and just maximizing our impact. And um, as we come to close this presentation, I want to recap a few ideas I, um, I shared today. So the first one, uh, product story can guide product development and help the team to understand uh, the end goal better. Second one, aligning on the core and related metrics ensures that the team is focusing on what truly matters to the product success. The third one, managing stakeholder expectations is crucial, especially when dealing with such complex products. Next one is that um, the value and of our outcomes is highly dependent on the quality and representative of our data. And finally, testing our assumptions effectively, cost efficiently, uh, could help us just to find more successful way to achieve results. Um, if any of you would like to explore this idea area a little more, feel free to reach out. I would be more than happy to share some links to some articles and materials I, um, I have to support this uh, session. And thank you for your time today.